Hello all, welcome to another weekly edition of QTip videos brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. In this edition of QTip videos, we are going to look into two new utility functions called greatest and least that got released in Azure SQL database recently. Both of these functions are very simple but pretty useful functions. Let's start by looking into the usage of these two functions. The greatest function can be used using the syntax greatest of expression 1, expression 2, etc. And similarly, the least function can be used by passing a series of expressions uh, like least of expression 1, expression 2, etc. And all these expressions can either be a constant value or it can be a variable or it can be a table column or it can be an expression themselves. When series of such expressions are passed to the greatest or the least function, the function does a comparison among the past values and return you the greatest value in the case of greatest function and the least value in the case of least function. So this is an example of a function which can be applied over multiple columns and it does a comparison of the values across columns in each of the rows and it returns the largest one or the smallest one depending on the type of the function. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the real-time use cases for these functions. Let's start off by understanding how the greatest and the least functions does implicit data type conversions and what would be the nature of its return value. So we can see these two sample queries. When we execute these two queries, what we are doing in these cases are we are passing a series of constant values to the greatest function here. And the values in the first case, it all belongs to the same type, uh, which is character type but one of them is a unicode based character value and all the other cases it is the normal uh, varchar value in that case if you see that the uh, result that will be returned by greatest function will be the alphabetically the highest value so in this case if you alphabetically order these values test will come as the last so that is why it returns test as the final result for the greatest function now, if you see the uh, return value for this function using SQL variant property fun uh, function, you can see that the resulting return type will be nvarchar. If you see the operands uh, that we are passing to, to these functions, the operands are nvarchar and varchar, of which the data type having the highest precedence is nvarchar. So that is why the return type will be nvarchar. So whenever you are passing a series of values which are belonging to different data type to either the greatest or the least function the uh, data type presence takes uh, care of the type of the return value so of the all the operands which is the one having the highest presence data type that would be the data type for the returning value so out of varchar and in varchar in this case it will be in varchar now take the second case where we are intermixing textual data with numerical data so there are integer values there are numeric values there are also te uh, text values inside which though we contain numerical values it is passed as text so in this case when you consider the data type precedence you can see that the data type having the highest precedence would be numeric data so if you see the return type for that particular greatest function call the return type will also be numeric and if you see the result the result will be of all these values the highest value will be 500 but it will convert that 500 which is passed in the text format to the highest precedence data type which is numeric so when it returns the result if you see the result will be 500.00 because if you see the uh, decimal value here the decimal value has a scale value of 2 so the resultant value will also have a scale value of 2 so we will have two decimal places so this is how greatest function does implicit data type conversion and the return type will determine based on the precedence of all the data types of the operands. Now let's look at one of the most popular use cases where we can apply the greatest and the least function. So here if you see this query what we are, we are doing here is we are making use of the pivot function and we are pivoting a set of values for each month and pivoting based on each year. So for April, August, December, like that for each month, we are looking what was the value in 2016, what was the value in 2017 and what was the value in 2018. Suppose the requirement says that along with this, we require two columns which should return the highest value ever across all the years. 
and also the lowest value ever across all years. This is one of a typical scenario where we can use these greatest and the least functions. Because these functions can work across columns, we can pass these pivoted columns as operands to these functions and the functions will return the highest and the lowest value among these pivoted values in two separate columns. So if you see the result, you will get for lowest yearly value the smallest value out of all the pivoted values and for the highest value you will get the greatest value out of all the pivoted values. This is a very popular scenario where the least and the greatest function can be used while pivoting values based on one or more columns. Now another case is where we have a requirement to always return a minimum or a maximum value when we have a, another calculated value to which a comparison has to be done. So take the scenario like this. So we have a table where we are going to calculate the commission percentage for each of the employees based on the amount of revenue that they have done to the company by means of their sales. So in this case, we will have a calculated commission based on the value for which they have done the actual sales. But there is also a rule like even if a person has not done much in a particular uh, month, he there is a minimum commission that he has to be paid. So in such cases, we have to first compare the calculated commission to this minimum commission. If the calculated commission is obviously more than the minimum commission, then that will be paid. If the calculated commission is very less, still he will be paid this base commission value. Such a scenario, we can make use of this greatest function. So if you see this statement that we are using here, we have a variable where we are calculating or we are passing the minimum commission value. In this case, we are setting it as 1000. And then we have a select statement where we are calculating the commission that is as per the sales done by the employee. And then we are using the greatest function here to compare between this calculated commission and the minimum commission. So wherever the calculated commission is less than the minimum commission, minimum commission will be paid. And wherever it is greater, the actual commission will be paid. So if you run the select statement, in the result set, you can compare between the commission and the payout. So wherever the commission is higher than 1000, that actual commission itself will be paid. Wherever the commission is low, see this case, we have only 74 hours commission, which is lower than 1000. So in this case, 1000 will be paid. And this comparison will be done by means of this greatest function, which will compare between the actual calculated commission versus the minimum commission and because it is very less the minimum commission will be paid similarly if you see here 935 which is less than 1000 so 1000 will be paid 405 again 1000 would be paid wherever it is higher the actual commission will be paid so these are two use cases real world use cases where you can apply these greatest function and in the other case you can apply both greatest and the least depending on whether you want the highest out of the value or the lowest out of the value. So this quick demonstration showed how the new greatest and the least functions can be used in one or two popular use cases. At this point of creating the video, these functions are only available inside Azure SQL database and Azure managed instance. I hope that these functions will become available in the on-premise SQL server as well as the Synapse Analytics soon because it looks like a very useful function which can be applied in many real world use cases. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Feel free to send in your comments and uh, subscribe to my channel for getting such quick tips in future. Click on bell icon to get notifications. Meet you all soon with another useful quick tip like this. Thanks and bye.